Greetings, pen pals. Well, we have yet again Alami Safari. I was debating whether to even do this video. It's like, can we say anything more about Alami Safari that hasn't already been said? And the answer is probably not, but I'm gonna do the video anyway, so here we go. So this is one of this year's sort of special edition colors. They did strawberry and cream. I did not get the strawberry one, I got the cream one. And, because I thought it was kind of quite different. So uh, here we go with the, what they call the cream color. Uh, one last year, if you remember, they went back to their original roots and came out with these um, uh, 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 green and uh, orange uh, colors with matching cases. This year was no exception. You got the nice little matching case with this one. The big difference here, though, in my mind, is I think they kind of blew it on the color match, and I'm not sure how much the camera can pick it up. But this pen case and the pen body the color is really really off this one is got the, the case itself is a much more of a kind of a peach color almost where this is really is more of a kind of a cream uh color and it's it just it's kind of off enough to be annoying whereas i think these color matches are really really spot on so a little little you know again the case was free so i'm not going to complain too much but they really didn't do a gr as good a job as they have done in the past with matching the color of the case to the color of the pen. That being said, it's a pretty nice pen. Lamy Safari, unlike last year, where both these pens came with a black clip, this one, um, pleasant uh, to see, has the clip that color matches the pen. So even though they were off on the case match, they uh, uh, did it with uh, the uh, pen as well. Another thing that they did differently, last year's pen, the um, a uh, pl trim plug, if you will, at the top of the cap was black, uh, and on this pen it matches the color of the pen. So they, so in the, in the, the pen itself, they think they did a nicer job in terms of having it consistently uh, the same color. I just don't think they, they kind of blew it a little bit on the case. So in terms of size, it's a Lamy Safari. So size-wise compared to a Lamy Safari, it's going to be spot on. And here it is compared to a Pilot Metropolitan. And as you can see, they're about the same size. This is a very, very traditional sized fountain pen. Um, very, very popular pen as well. The top of the pen um, has this sort of plus sign. It kind of almost looks like something you don't screw the Phillips screwdriver. It does not. That's not what it is. The fountain pen has a plus sign, um, the pencil has uh, nothing, and the uh, rollerball has just a straight uh, line across. So if they're in your pocket, you can differentiate them. That's actually a fairly common thing. Not necessarily the same uh, symbology, but having a differentiation on the cap of a pen between the different types of writing instruments in the same product line is actually fairly common. Old Esther books did it decades ago. So. Um, so what we're talking about a pen that has flat sides, so it won't roll even with this giant clip, which we'll get to in a minute. It has a Lamy uh, embossed on the side of the pen. Uh, it does have this ubiquitous uh, ink window on both sides, so we're not going to be eyedroppering this. There have been cases where people, what they'll do is they'll get a rollable version, which doesn't have this. They'll remove the section, swap it with the rollable section, and then eyedropper it that way. That's way too much work to go through. You don't need to eyedropper it. Um, it is a cartridge converter pen. A car converter is not included, so you do need to buy a Lamy converter. Separately, Lamy does use proprietary cartridges and proprietary converters. These are made quite nicely, so if you look here, um, see that little U-shaped cutout here? When you thread this on, it will line up precisely so you won't see any of the cutout uh, or any of the non-cutout parts occluding the window at all. Um, that's actually a one way of telling counterfeits. Counterfeits seldom get that exactly precisely correct that like genuine Lamy Safaris do. And there are lots and lots of Lamy counterfeits out there in the marketplace, unfortunately. The pen has a fairly nice cap liner that works quite effectively. Um, let's talk about the clip now for a minute. This clip is very, very polarizing. Either you like it or you don't. It's extremely functional. Um, it's a very big, fat clip. Uh, a lot of people just think it's unattractive. I will say, if you think the clip is normally unattractive on a Safari, one like this where the clip kind of blends in and matches the color of the cap might be uh, appealing to you because it's less, certainly less obtrusive than it is on something like that. Um, but a lot of people just don't like it. I like it just fine. Um, 
It's a pull to uncap pen. It posts very nicely and it does have a faceted section that is going to enforce this triangular grip. So this is, could, some could say a student type pen in some circles, but it will uh, enforce that uh, triangular grip whether you like it or not. Getting to the nib, this one is in medium. It's a Lamy nib. Lamy nibs write really, really, really well. They can be easily swapped out. And of course it has an uninspiring plastic feed. Um, between the section, the barrel has this thing that kind of looks like an O-ring or a gasket, but it isn't. It's just sort of a plastic component of the section that kind of looks like a gasket or an O-ring, but it does not serve that function at all. But um, there you go. Um, the distal end of the pen has this sort of recessed bit here that is sort of very classic for all Lamy Safaris. Uh, again, some people uh, think that really looks very incomplete, almost like something's missing. Uh, other people are fine with it. So again, it depends what you, um, what you like. But that is what a Lamy Safari uh, is, is up to these days. I, I particularly kind of like this cream color. I really, really think they did a nice job with it. Um, that's kind of why I picked it up. I thought it was a little bit uh, different. Don't have really any pens that are this particular color or anything like it. So uh, with all the several hundred pens that I have. So that is this for a Lamy Safari. But of course, pens are meant to write. And I know you wanna see this pen write, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here today, like we said, is a Lamy Safari. And this has a uh, steel nib in medium and this is smooth it has really good flow etc kind of what you'd expect Lamy nibs are very very consistent I've seldom had one disappoint me at all it is probably about average wetness and it's a really really pleasant writing experience I'm a somewhat of a fan of these pens I have quite a few of them, and um, I like them uh, quite a bit. I've yet to be disappointed by one of these. I picked up, uh, I would say, in various places in the world, I picked up probably two or three of them in airport shops for some reason. They, when I'm sitting around the airport and they usually have a rack of Lamy pens, it's very hard for me to resist picking one up. So I have picked quite a few up in airports. This one was not got in an airport, but um, I have quite a few that have been. Um, that is about it for this pen for today. Lamy Safari, there you go. Let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, you probably noticed that this ink has got quite a bit of sparkle and shimmer to it. So this is Detrimentus. Velvet. Black. Copper. So basically what this is, is a black ink with this fairly high degree of copper colored um, uh, sheen, which really, really looks great. I love the combination of the black and the copper. I just think it looks fantastic. And again, this is a little bit unusual, this copper colored sheen. You don't see that too much in too many inks. And on a black ink like this, I think it looks absolutely great. Like any ink with this sort of metallic particles in it, if you look here at the bottle, you will see all the copper shimmer has settled to the bottom. So when you get an ink like this, um, you need to shake it very well. It even says so right here on the bottle, shake very well before first use and they, uh, before use, and they absolutely mean that. So every time you use this ink, you really want to um, uh, shake this bottle well before you fill up your pen. Similarly, if you have your pen, oh, for an ink like this, if you have your pen sitting for a while and haven't used it, you really want to probably agitate the pen a bit because what's going to happen is all of that particles are going to settle to the bottom of the converter and you don't want that. So um, again, uh, I would strongly recommend you, you uh, agitate 
your pen a bit if you have let it sit and not use it. Otherwise, you A, you won't get the sparkly effect, and B, it'll end up fouling your pen because you'll just have essentially be all the uh, metallic material is going to settle to the bottom. Well, that's going to just about do it for this video. I sure hope you enjoyed watching it because I sure enjoyed making it for you folks. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.